Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're getting back on the junkyard dog. We've got a lot to do on this car today. We have got to get this car finished up for Cleese and Cars Indy. So first thing we're gonna do is get the oil changed, get the plugs changed, get the wires changed. We've got to uh, check the factory gas tank, make sure it's not gonna leak. And then we've got to get it hooked back up so we can get the junkyard dog off of this jug. We've got to fix the front brakes, delete on the back brakes. I'm gonna take the torsion bars and I'm gonna lower this car down probably inch and a half, two inches so I can give it a little bit of rake. Uh, what else we gotta do? Um, my goodness, it's a ton. And then we've got to get the new headers that I ordered from Schoenfeld put on the car. And they, I think these are gonna look killer. Hopefully it works out right. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the factory manifolds, get all that exhaust cut out and install these new headers and they're gonna come shoot straight up through the hood. And I know some of the purists out there are absolutely just gonna hate me for this, but yes, I'm gonna have to cut that hood. Uh, and I'm down with it. I, I mean, I hate more than anybody to cut up a factory hood or anything on a factory car, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, whether it's tomorrow or two weeks from now, this car is gonna be stripped for Homer. So I'm gonna have as much fun with this car as I can. But uh, anyway, hang tight. I mean, we've got a lot to do. I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride as usual. And we're gonna see what uh, see what the junkyard dog looks like. I was hoping to maybe have the new decals put on this weekend, but we're gonna shoot for that for maybe next weekend before we get ready to go. And uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, let me just get you set up and uh, we're gonna get to tearing into this car. This is Buster Radio Garage, hang tight. All right, guys, one of the first things I want to do is I want to put a gallon or so of gas in this old girl and see if this tank has any holes in the bottom. So I'm going to put a gallon or so of gas in there and see if we get like a fuel waterfall underneath the car. If we do, then that changes everything. So, let's see what happens. To be honest with you, it doesn't stink. I can smell fuel. I can hear this one in the tank. Hopefully we don't have a leak. No, so far so good. I don't have to worry about it holding a full tank of fuel. At the most we're gonna run in here at any burnout competition, especially at least the one, is gonna be three or four gallons. So if it'll hold that, get me through the burnout competition, that's all I'm worried about. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna be worried about wall tapping this car are running it into the wall because let's just be honest carnage is what everybody wants to see the kids and even the adults want to see you run a car into a wall or mangle it up or make a mess or so i'm totally cool with that again the drivetrain is all i bought this car for anyway so if we can go out and get a big crowd reaction or make a bunch of kids happy for the for the day by wall tapping this car I'm down with it. Oh. Well, so far so good, guys. I'm not seeing any drips or anything of that nature. So we're just gonna let that gallon or so sit in there and see what happens. And we'll just keep adding a little more and more until 
it either leaks or it don't. And if we can get it to hold a couple gallons, three or four gallons, five, then we'll leave it alone. And we'll just run it like it is. All right, hang tight a minute. Uh, let's get up under the hood and uh, get to work. Hang tight. All right, guys, like I was saying, is hopefully, hopefully by the end of the day, we're going to have our new headers installed. So before I get going on all this, I'm gonna go ahead and start soaking these manifold bolts with a little bit of PV blaster. Try to loosen that, try to get some penetration in there so these don't snap off when I take them out of the car. And like I've said before, these manifold or header bolts, either your best friend or your worst enemy, especially when you're doing something like this. Because we've all been there, you're like tick, 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 snap. And then you're sitting there trying to tap it out. It's just an absolute nightmare. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep soaking these with some PV blaster. And then right before we go to take them off, I'm just gonna throw some heat on them and just nice and easy get them bolts off there. And then we'll see if we can get our new headers on. So I'm gonna soak these down and then we'll start taking some of this crap off and uh, start trying to make all the repairs. Believe it or not, when I done this to Homer, we took all his off there and it was flawless. I, I'm jinxing myself, I know when I say that, but his, we were worried to death because obviously we were saving everything on that motor. Hopefully, this car is just as forgiving and everything comes off without a hitch. I'm missing a nut there, so I'm gonna have to hunt around and see if I can find the one up. Homer's old nut. Get rid of that. We're not gonna need it right now. Like I said, the Mises have been eating on this hose pretty good, so I'm gonna have to get in here, and it's a pain in the royal rear end trying to get that out, hooked from the water pump with that bracket in the way. So I might have to loosen up the AC unit to get in there to get that clamp off, and then we'll just replace this section here with one of Homer's old hoses, and it'll be fine. And then we got to get under there and get that bottom rad hose off. And I think I, like I said, I've got a ton of Cordova parts over here. So I'm sure Homer's old, whole old hose is in one of those bins. I'm not gonna put a ton of money of new parts in here just to go tear up the car. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, why'd you spend all that on headers? You know, it's just, it's the cool factor. I mean, that's the reason I bought those put on here. All right, let's see. So I guess we're gonna go ahead and get the oil changed because if the numbers are right, the oil has been sitting in there for over 20 years. So it's probably pretty gamey. So we'll get it out and see what it looks like. Hold on a second. All right, guys, I don't know how much of this you can see, but if this oil has been in here since the early 90s, this is probably going to be pretty gamey if it's even liquid anymore <laughs> I'm about to find out all right well moment of truth let's see what we got yep zero viscosity left and i mean zero See if I can get a light back here and see how black that thing is. Yeah, you can't even see light through it. That stuff is nasty. I mean, you can't even see light through it. It blocks the light for crying out loud. It is no wonder why the old pressure wasn't very good on this. All right, guys, let me uh, get this out. We'll go up and take the oil filter off. I'm a big oil filter nerd, so I'm just kind of curious what type of oil filter is on here. So We'll get up in there and get that out, and we'll get this all changed over, and then uh, we'll start on the top of the motor. Hang tight a second. 
All right, guys, we got the oil changed and any of you ever worked on Mopar, like with some of their other stuff, it's a royal pain in the butt. So this oil filter here is right here underneath the manifold, right between the torsion bar and the exhaust. So break it loose up here, kind of clown and fumble around, get it out, get oil just all over my floor. And then uh, we'll get the new one put in and we'll go from there. Hang tight a second. All right, guys, got her out. It is gamey, but we've got, first time I've seen one of these, it's a mighty oil filter. Throw down in the comments below if you've ever seen one of these before. Let's see. Yep. Well, let's see what she's got in it, if anything. No metal, no water, got fuel. No viscosity whatsoever. Well, we'll get the new oil put in, fire up and see if that oil pressure is any better, and then we'll go from there. Hang tight a second. All right guys, we got the oil changed, all of that taken care of, new Wix filter put in, new Rotella T4 oil. Now we're gonna move on to this heater core hose that the mice have absolutely just eaten to death but not sure if you can see down in there but the clamp is buried in behind the ac pulley or the ac bracket so what i'm going to do is just take a flathead wedge it down there against this clamp and i'm going to snap it off and just pull the clamp hose and all out. And then when I put it, the new clamp in, I will put it to where I can access it through this port in the bracket and then tighten this back up where it's supposed to be. And then we're gonna fool with getting that duct taped little rad hose off. So we'll have to drain all the coolant out of here, which is fine for the burnout competition. We're just gonna run water anyway. So then we'll at least get the hose problems out of the way and that's done. And then we'll go ahead. I've been soaking these manifolds all day in PB blaster. So hopefully we'll be able just to pop these off and we'll get the new stacks put up. I got my granddaughter over here. She's cleaning all the walnuts and leaves and dead mice and Lord knows what else is in there out. So when we go to pull these off, we don't have to worry about stuff going down in the intake ports. So here are the exhaust ports. So hang tight, we're just, we're nailing it a piece at a time here. All right guys, got that hose out of here. Here's the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, the old nipple right there. And we're just gonna get a new piece of hose to put it up here. Now, like I told you, I've got, I don't throw anything away. I try to keep everything here that we need or we may need for these cars. So I've got Homer's old hose tote. Oh, here we go. Here's one of his old eater hoses. So what I'm going to do is I'll just connect one end down here. And then I'll take and measure it out. Up, cut it, and mount it here. And then at least this is all back to where it's supposed to be hooked up. I know it seems kind of irrelevant to do this. You know, it'd probably be easier just to go cap off the heater core and cap off all this mess and whatever, but it's just the quickest thing possible. This isn't going to be a show car or a race car or anything. I would be impressed if it made it out of the burnout competition. So essentially, I'm just trying to get it as mechanically sound as I can so we can get out there and tear it up more or less. So give me a few minutes. I'll get this all hooked back up. We'll start down on the radiator hose and we'll just keep nipping away at it until we can get it done. Uh, next will be plugs and wires and the get the old manifolds all off in one shot because I'm really excited about getting these Schoenfeld uh, headers put on, which I think are just, you're gonna look ridiculous. So they're gonna look awesome. Only bad part is I'm gonna have to cut the hood to get the hood to shut down over them, but it is what it is. So, all right, let's get back after it. All right, guys, we got this hose fixed. So we got the new heater hose hooked up. I'm gonna take some zip ties and get 
you know, kind of everything held back together. The little loom that was here to hold them broke. So my granddaughter has Homer's old, brand new, but old spark plug wires that was on the car just for, I think one burnout. So we're gonna go ahead and change all the plugs. And while we got the plugs out, we're gonna go ahead and change on all the wires because these are pretty nasty. We'll get all that done. And then we're gonna go ahead, in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get these manifolds off because we're gonna have to cut the exhaust loose from the car, get all that removed. And then we'll go ahead and get new plugs, new wires and get the headers mounted. If I can get them underneath the hood, uh, just to free till we can get the hood cut. Once we get all of this up here taken care of, we'll go ahead and jack the car up, drain the fluids, get that lower rad hose changed. I've also got, I was going through another Homer bin. So I've actually got all brand new belts in here that were on Homer. Uh, here's a brand new lower, oh wait a minute, sorry. Here's a new lower rad hose that was on Homer. So we'll go ahead and put that on. I've actually got a new upper hose. I may just go ahead and do them both while I've got it apart. Uh, so that's gonna be it. I've still got Homer's, we'll, we'll test on the alternator, make sure it's charging. I've still got, I think Homer had a fairly new alternator. Yeah, it's brand new. It's laying right there or close to it. May just go ahead and put that on as well. And then I've actually, it's been a couple hours since we put fuel in the junkyard dog's tank. Let's go ahead and check it. Yeah, so we've got no leaks. So here shortly we'll replace the fuel lines and put a couple filters in and then we'll see if he'll run off his own tank, which would be awesome if we could get away with that. All right, we're gonna keep nipping at it here. I'll check in with you here in a few minutes. And then when we get it all done, we're gonna kind of blow all this out. My granddaughter's been cleaning all the leaves and spiders and Lord knows what else. It's hard telling what's in that mouse sucker. But all right, hang tight. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, got the driver's side manifold off and uh-oh. We got one, I don't know if you can see that, but we've got one broke off in here. Fortunately, there's still a half inch of it left. So what I'm gonna try to do is I heated all these up before I pulled them out. And this one here just broke off. So I got about a half inch left. So I'm gonna heat on this a little bit more, get a pair of channel lock or a pair of ice grips on here and just keep trying to ease her out of there. And then we'll be able to, if we can get that out, we'll be able to go and put this side back together. So that's what I told you. Those are can be your worst enemy. Fortunately, I got lucky. So give me a few minutes. And we'll get all this changed out and cleaned up, and then we'll get the new header put on. Hang tight a minute. All right, guys. I was able to get a half-inch bolt to attach what little bit of nipple we had left there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and weld that bolt to those threads and hopefully we have enough heat penetration and enough strength to be able to back that i mean it's only in there like an eighth of an inch it's crazy so we're going to go ahead and weld that on and see what happens all right guys we got the driver's side done which was an absolute freaking nightmare but anyway it's in there here we go so there's the through the hood stack for this side. Got all the plugs changed, got new wires over here. Got everything bolted in. Those Schofield, Schofield headers are spot on. Didn't have no problem putting them on whatsoever. But yeah, they look killer. So I was doing that. The wife got Linda all nice and shiny again. So she's not dirty anymore at all. So that's all ready for the power tour. But anyway, so the huge on this side got one busted in the exact same spot right there. 
So we're gonna have to fight that bolt getting it out. Get this, I gotta get the exhaust cut out of the way because if not, I'm gonna end up breaking my new oil filter I just put on. So we'll get this manifold out, new plugs, new wires. I think once we get this all put together, we'll take it outside and pressure wash underneath the hood. I never did do that when I cleaned it because it is a nasty, nasty mess under here. So get all this cleaned and then gas tank's still holding good. So I think we'll go ahead and put five gallons in there and uh, see if she'll run off or have run off the own tank, his own tank. And once we get all that done, we gotta still lower the front end, still gotta fix the brakes in the front, delete the brakes in the back. A lot to do, a lot to do yet. But anyway, hang tight. I'm gonna go ahead and get the passenger side header in and we'll go from there. All right, cool. Be back with you in a minute. All right, guys, got everything hooked up. Got the new through the hood stacks put in. All new plugs, all new wires, fixed all the hoses, uh, new oil, fuel line fixed all the way back to the tank. And then I just put a cheap little service loop here with a fuel filter until we can see how bad that tank is, if it works at all. Got the old exhaust cut off, just kind of hanging, chilling out back there. So we're gonna go ahead and see if there's a fire up. And then we'll lower the front end on the car, cut the exhaust off, and then just let it run for a few minutes. Oh, well then ultimately yeah, I gotta cut the hood, so I gotta do that yet, so I can shut the hood. But uh, let me get you set up on the stand here, and we're gonna give it a shot. Hang tight a minute. breather cover back on so we don't blow a bunch of dust down in the car. She runs. she runs so we're gonna do is go ahead and cut the hood so we can get it shut and then uh we'll let her just sit here and get hot and maybe drive her around a little bit hang tight a second all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and butcher this nice perfectly straight hood so the plans are i'm just gonna drill pilot holes essentially where those stacks come up meet the hood and then what i'll do is i'll get on the back side center off six inch by six inch squares off the center of that hole. Take a uh, cutting wheel and lay the hood down. Now again, this is not gonna be the prettiest thing in the world. This is a burnout car, so bear with me. what we've got as you can see is just two holes one there and one over there now I'm just gonna square off and uh, mark it with some tape and cut two holes and then we're gonna lay that hood down and play with her for a little bit all right boys and girls heads put up or shut up time so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting this hood <laughs> Alright, there's
there's hole number one. Get on the back side, cut that underneath off, we'll pop that one out. Go over and do the other one. I'm sure we're gonna have to do a little bit of here and there to, for the final, but we'll just keep it going. All right, guys, it is now the next morning. Uh, I ran out of daylight and well into the middle of the night last night, getting to where we are right now, but we have the stacks put in the car. We got the hood primarily cut and got all of this hooked up. Let's see what we got here. So, got to pressure wash and clean all of this yet, which I'll get to a little bit later on this morning. And get this done. Again, got the hood primary cut done. So, we'll clean that up. So, the main goal for this morning is, is to lower the front of the car. Uh, again, like I said in another video, I want to get this way down. So, I'm going to shoot for two inches. Uh, more front rake. And get it down and then I've got to cut the rest of the old exhaust off so it's kind of just hanging there for now so we'll get that cut off here in a little bit and then I think we'll just get the car cleaned up a little bit especially on the doors and the areas where we're gonna have our decals for the burnout competition and i think that's going to be just about it and this car is going to be ready to go it is as you can imagine crazy crazy loud so i'll definitely have to be wearing some ear plugs when we're doing that but i think it's super cool now to be honest with you i absolutely got my teeth kicked in from people on the internet last night. I put a couple pictures on, I think it was just one picture on the page is this to show progress on the car, if you will, because I think those look pretty cool. And of course the purist just, I mean, destroyed me over cutting that hood. And any of you that know me know that I take these cars and preserve them and keep them put away and take care of them. I mean, I got a few in here, plus what's in the barn. And then I got Homer. And Homer I've had overwhelming uh, support in doing. And it's, it's the same thing. I, I just don't understand it. I mean, Homer, I have, this is a 46,000 mile car. Ultimately from here back was just completely gone with rust. Now, we couldn't tell it on the outside. I mean, he had uh, some quarter panel damage here. But, I mean, the car could have been saved. It really could have. I, I could have put $10,000 in this car, $15,000 in this car, and made it another Linda, or made it another RT, or made it another whatever. And I've had overwhelming support on that car to get it done. Everybody wants to see a twin supercharged Cordoba. And I get it. I want to see one myself. But for some reason, this car that sat for dead, no one gave two craps about for all them years. And I bring it out of the junkyard. And just because I haven't parted it out so I could pocket money, or because I don't want to put ten, fifteen thousand dollars of my own money to make this a beautiful car to sit somewhere else, another one that's not gonna be driven, like the dozens that we have already. But because I'm going to take this car and make a burnout car out of it, I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. What are you doing? This is retarded. Why did you cut a perfectly good hood that you could have put on eBay for somebody else to buy and do what they wanted to with it? But because my idea, I'm doing, I'm an idiot, which, which is fine. That's cool. I can take it. I just, it's just, it's just real classy when people do you that way. I, I just never understood it. I've watched people over the years mangle cars and demolition derbies and and whatever. But I have never said anything out of the way. You know what I mean? I haven't. But it is what it is. So I'm going to do what I want with this car. I know I have, I don't know how many of you out there that are supporting what I'm doing here, and that's cool. I appreciate it. But it just shows you that some people are just, there's, there's no making them happy. 
Anyway, now that that's over with, let me get you set up. I'm gonna take you under there. Some of you may or may not know how to adjust torsion bars or the torsion keys or whatever. So again, I'm gonna try to get this car down two more inches in the front. We're gonna get the brake straightened out. And my shop is just an absolute mess from yesterday. We had a heck of a time, the manifolds. I think all together we had five bolts break in the manifolds. Fortunately, we was able to take nuts, put them on those studs, weld them on and back them out and it worked out just fine. We got really, really lucky. But with further, without further ado, let's get this car lowered. All right guys, getting ready to lower the car. I'm gonna shoot for two inches. But anyway, here are your torsion key bolts, which are attached to this torsion bar. You see right here, just all the way back and is locked back here. So essentially, essentially, you loosen the bolt, it lowers the car. You tighten the bolt, it raises the car. Now ideally, you wanna mark the bolt, mark your frame rail, that way you can count the turns. My only concern under here getting a look in is this bolt looks like it's already been loosened, but the car is still, in my opinion, super high in the air. So I don't know how much this you can see, but I've still got a little room on the key here. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it. I'm gonna shoot for a total of 10 turns. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it, but I got one here and one over there. I've already got the car up in the air to take the pressure off of the suspension. And my total ride height from the ground to the wheel lip, when I started, I didn't record it like an idiot, but I wrote it on the hood like a responsible person with a pencil. It was 29 inches. So I'm gonna try to get the car down to 27 inches. So give me a second and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, guys, I was able to get that front end drop back down, or drop down anyway. I wanted to go a little bit further, but that was all the further the keys would allow me to go. I went down two inches and uh, filled the fender wells in, if nothing else, a little bit better. But uh, turned out pretty good. I got the keys maxed out on both sides. They actually wouldn't go any further. I actually snugged them up a half a turn. So it'd have something in there that I think grabbed a little bit better, but turned out pretty cool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting this exhaust off in the back. The tank didn't leak all night last night, so I think we're good there. Not exactly sure what all we sucked up in the filter because I let this run quite a bit last night after I quit videoing because it just got to be so late. But let's see what we sucked up, if anything. I uh, got this goofy service loop in here for now. We'll get this straightened up. Ah, uh, really nothing. Looks pretty clean. So we're good there. I really expected that tank to be full of rust and nasty, but it was empty. There really wasn't anything in there. Ow. All right, well, go ahead and get this exhaust hacked off. And I think we're pretty well good to go for Indy. Turned out pretty good. Might get it out and drive it around here for a second just to see how it does, but it is ridiculously loud as you can imagine. And it's filthy enough on the, there's absolutely no clear left on the paint. It's just chalky and so it, it grabs onto every bit of dirt on your hands and everything else, but all right, hang tight a second.
steak I wanted. Turned out really good. Now all we gotta do is uh, wait on TNF to finish up what we're gonna do for the decals. And we'll get the junkyard dog all marked up for Indy. And he'll be ready to go. Turned out really good. Heck of a difference from what? Two weeks ago when we drug him home. The listen to just burn like a kitten sitting there. But everything mechanically has been gone through. I mean everything. I love the rake. Looks really good. Build up the fender well tonight. But we're just gonna let him sit here, get hot or get warm, cycle over, see how he does. And then uh, we'll go from there. And if you haven't done it yet, make sure to like and subscribe. There's gonna be a lot going on with this car here lately or here in the future. And uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I post there every day on what we got going on. So hopefully this coming up weekend we'll have the car letter, get everything ready to go for Indy. Make sure you get out there and watch us. Check out the event, it's really cool. Alright, that's gonna be the end of this episode. Thanks for watching.